there's no sound in nature more terrifying than an angry rattlesnake. They're widely feared for their aggression and deadly venom, but there's another side of these iconic animals that no one talks about. Today, we're going to show you the truth about rattlesnakes and share how their scariest abilities are really the key to a story of North American domination that you've never heard before. It's said that if you hear a rattlesnake rattle its tail, it's about to attack you. If you take a bite from one, your death is guaranteed. People truly believe that rattlesnakes are just biological landmines eagerly waiting to attack anything or anyone that gets too close. And if you live anywhere near these vipers, so basically in most US states and many other places around the Americas, chances are high that you've heard some of this stuff too. But their true story of survival is deeper and more fascinating than most of us ever realize, and that is what we want to show you today. My name is Evan, and this is Harrison. We're twin brothers on a mission to make you an insider in the natural world, which often brings us face to face with the world's most misunderstood and dangerous creatures as we show you how their survival depends on the features we fear most. Now to uncover the truth about rattlesnakes, we're hunting for the most widespread species in America, the one you're more likely to encounter than any other, the timber rattlesnake. This search has brought us to southern Louisiana, where our longtime friend and local expert Zachary Gray is taking us to one of his best spots to find rattlesnakes. But this isn't exactly pristine wilderness. We're looking for these infamous vipers in literal piles of trash right next to a major highway and a huge neighborhood. And as if we needed proof that you don't need to be far from people to encounter a rattlesnake, it didn't take long at all for Zach to flip a piece of cover that revealed the legendary snake we've been searching for. Whoa! Let's go! Whoa. Wow. wow. Big guy. Really nice snake. Also looks like he's in shed. Yeah, he is yeah. in shed next to a fire ant mound. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. if y'all, so uh, I don't want to keep it in that fire ant stuff. If y'all jump back, I'll yep. pull it out. All right. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, I'm, I'm going right where y'all yep. are. Yep, go for it. So, like, move fast. Nice. Big wow, in blue. In blue indeed. I'm gonna get him up here into the grass. Yep, yep, yep. There it is. That's the sound we've been waiting for. Okay. Wow. There it is. This is the snake that we literally came to Louisiana to find. This is the timber rattlesnake. Now you can see this particular individual is actually being pretty relaxed, all things considered. We did just disturb her from underneath a bit of cover, so she's pretty disoriented right now, but she's not rattling. She's just standing her ground right now, and it will kind of depend on the individual how they're gonna react Absolutely. if you were to first see them. One of the first things any snake will do, venomous or not, is try and flee, oftentimes. They don't want to be around people. We are a potential threat in this animal's mind, so she wants to do everything in her power to either get away or get us to get away. Exactly. Now, she actually just turned towards us here. She's smelling us. She can sense our body heat. And even though her eyes are cloudy, she can still see us. There we go. And that is probably their most famous defensive display. The rattling of that tail lets us know that she knows where we are. Don't mess with me. I'm dangerous. And that's something you really have to be aware of. The rattle is there as a warning to stop conflict before it starts, but if you were to step too close, a bite could happen. But it's important to note that in this scenario, this snake really is scared. All she's trying to do is defend her life. So here's an interesting question. If a rattlesnake thinks its life is in danger, why do they make all this noise and give away their position? Despite what many people think, they don't have to rattle before they strike. So couldn't they just bite the predator if it gets too close and be done with it? But that's the thing. People think the rattle is a signal that the snake is about to attack, but it's actually the exact opposite. These guys don't want conflict any more than you do, so they use their rattle as a warning to give potential threats every chance to walk away and leave them alone. And what's crazy is, rattlesnakes aren't the only ones that do this. Snakes all over the world shake their tails when they feel threatened, even in places where rattlesnakes have never existed. 
Rattlesnakes have just perfected this technique, allowing them to be heard over much larger distances than other species. But if you still think the rattle is some kind of war cry, think about this. They don't just use their rattles to scare away direct attackers, but also to alert large animals moving through the habitat that the snake is there to avoid being trampled. This ability to defend against multiple types of threats without wasting their venom or putting themselves in harm's way by trying to bite is one of the biggest reasons that rattlesnakes have been successful at surviving in so many different habitats. You ignore the rattlesnake's warning at your peril, because they will use their venomous bite as a last resort defense if they have to. And let's just say that if you do take a bite, it's not gonna be pretty. Rattlesnakes in general have a fascinating cocktail of venom, and timber rattlesnakes have a particularly unique and particularly complex venom. A typical timber rattlesnake bite is going to cause extreme pain because rattlesnakes like timbers have hemotoxic venom. It breaks down your blood cells, your tissue cells, and actually starts to destroy them. So what you can see with a lot of rattlesnake bites and timbers in particular, you'll get necrosis, a lot of hemorrhaging. This is a very serious bite, and if either of us were to be tagged, we would be going immediately to the hospital, probably a trip ender. Now, one thing that's really important to note about the venom of the timber rattlesnake is that it actually varies throughout their distribution. So for the most part, they are gonna have primarily hemotoxic venom, but in certain parts of their range, their venom also has more neurotoxic properties, which means it targets the central nervous system of your body, and that can be incredibly dangerous. That can cause a lot of pain and spasms in your muscles. It can cause localized paralysis. And if it goes systemic, it can even cause respiratory failure. And basically, it shuts down your internal organs. So that can have a devastating effect on your body and even cause death in some cases. So a bite from this snake is incredibly serious. And for that reason, a lot of people don't think that we can coexist with these animals at all. They think there's no way for us to live safely around them. And that is simply not true. Look, I know that laundry list of horrifying symptoms isn't doing the rattlesnake's image any favors, but think about this. Even if you were to receive a full tank of venom, the effects would never be able to take you out faster than you could retaliate and probably kill the snake. So their bite isn't as strong a defense as you might think. In reality, their venom isn't a weapon for fighting off attackers, it's the rattlesnake's main tool for getting a meal. See, these vipers are ambush hunters. They'll lie motionless for hours or even days at a time, waiting for an unsuspecting animal to wander close enough for them to grab it. The thing is, though rattlesnakes can strike with terrifying speed, they're not particularly fast moving over land. And they're hunting prey like rats, rabbits, and birds that are agile enough that they could easily escape if the snake can incapacitate them quickly. That is where the venom comes in. The gruesome effects of their blood-destroying hemotoxins seem brutal to us, but stopping their blood from flowing is a fantastic method to prevent your food from running away. And if that isn't enough, the neurotoxins that some populations have evolved overwhelm the nervous system so quickly that they can literally stop prey in their tracks, cutting off the signals that make their muscles and organs work, usually in 10 minutes or less. Also, something most people don't realize is that rattlesnakes actually rely on their venom to start the process of digestion. Because without its ability to break down the prey's body for easy consumption, the snakes really couldn't eat at all. The best part is that because they can take out prey without having to chase it down, ambush hunting is a very energy efficient technique. And perfecting it has allowed rattlesnakes to survive in a staggering variety of habitats, from mountain forests and swamps to grasslands and deserts. In fact, they can be found in practically every habitat in North America that reptiles can live in. And the rattlesnake's total domination of the continent is really possible because of the power that their venom holds. However, being extremely successful across the country hasn't always worked out in their favor. Because the more numerous and widespread they are, the more they come into conflict with people. And that rarely ends well for the snakes. Hey Zach, if you want to hop in here a second. I think your perspective is going to be really valuable on this because you've grown up in this area where there are a lot of rattlesnakes and there are a lot of people that hate rattlesnakes. 
So can you kind of talk us through the conflict that exists between these animals and people? What are people really feeling about these snakes in these areas where they live? One of the biggest things is people don't even know anything about these rattlesnakes. All they know is whenever they run into a big snake like this, they're just thinking it's going to kill me, it's going to kill my family, it's going to kill my dog. And people don't want to have natural spaces with the rattlesnakes in the first place. And most certainly people don't want to keep them in their yard. Oftentimes, these guys are just killed on sight. And in a lot of places where they used to exist, they're either incredibly endangered now from all the direct killing from people and from losing their habitat, or in many places they've been pushed out entirely. And it's really unfortunate because the snakes are doing absolutely nothing wrong. It's actually humans moving into their habitat, developing it for housing and for agriculture that causes a lot of the conflict because these snakes are just trying to survive in the last holdouts of their habitat that exist. So it's really us coming into their space where a lot of the problems are really stemming from. Yeah, and that's what I see out here. You'll have one little tiny patch. Now I've been coming out here for years. And I'll have one little spot. I'm like, yep, there's about a dozen of them living. It's not a ton. You'll have just a few living in one spot. Come back one day, there's bulldozers, excavators, everything all over the place. And I'm like, ah, no. So now I know half my snakes are dead. And then the other half are going to be causing problems for people. It's not that the snakes are moving into people's neighborhoods. It's actually quite the opposite. We're moving into theirs. Exactly. Now, we really want to prove that these are not aggressive animals. They're not interested in coming after you and biting you. And I think the best way to do that is to get this beautiful snake in hand to see how they would really react when we break all the rules, push all the boundaries farther than anyone else should to show you the truth about these incredible snakes. We've talked about it enough. I think it's time to get into the test here. Harrison's back in. Definitely. And now she's still scared. But what we want to prove is they are not out to kill people. That is not what this animal is trying to do. So nothing left to do but get after it. This is something we've been waiting for for so long. Coming here to Louisiana, finding the timber rattlesnake. I'm going to move off just a little bit so we're not overcrowding her as Harrison starts this interaction. There we go. But essentially, all we're trying to do here, get her up, get her moving in the other direction. Nice and careful, bro. Good, nice, nice, nice. And I can grab the tail here. And that is your cane brake rattlesnake. You're all right. Hi, sweetheart. This is a beautiful animal. One of the most impressive and most iconic vipers in the entire world. Definitely my favorite snake right now. Probably in top 10 ever. Absolutely. You can't beat the iconic snake of the United States. You're okay. This is even better. My hand is on it. This snake knows what's happening. It is aware that there's a predator right now literally grabbing it in this snake's mind. I'm a predator. And look what she's doing. She's not attacking me. She's not trying to kill Evan. They're not monsters. And this is the proof. She's right there. Hey there, sweetheart. Up she goes. And just like that again, she's not doubling back over her body trying to strike. She'd be well within her rights. I'm actually probably just gonna do the same thing you just did head come down. They definitely feel most comfortable when their body is supported. If they feel like they're being picked up, carried off, that's really going to get them agitated. But what this snake did just there when she came towards us, that is not at all an indication of aggression. Certainly not. The reason she came towards us, the reason she's doing that right now, is because we caught her back there. Where she came from is behind us. We're literally in her way right now. And I promise you, if we were on the other side closer to you, she would still be going that way. It's not about us. It's about where she feels the most safe. That is not in our hands. It's back in her hide. But this is the thing that we have waited so many years to prove. If you have no... I'm gonna drop her down there. There we are. You have no idea how long we have talked about getting this segment with an animal this beautiful. Timber rattlesnakes are not monsters. They are not trying to kill you. They have venom, but there is a reason for it. And really, if it wasn't the right answer to the problems these snakes are facing, they wouldn't have it to begin with. This is just something they have evolved that helps them survive, and it makes them one of the coolest snakes in the world, in my opinion. Absolutely. So thank you to this beautiful little snake for being so cooperative. This is really a dream come true for me. Nicely done, bro. 
We are gonna get this girl back under her cover. She has more than earned it. There we go. That's a good snake. See, they're not trying to kill people. All right, follow me back this way. Her board is right down here. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera, but priorities. How about that? One last look, the timber rattlesnake. All right, see you little one. Thank you for everything, including that musk in my face. And get back under there. She's scooting back under the board there. There we go. Go on, sweetie. Boop, boop, boop. Go on, little one. There we go. Now it goes without saying, but trying to handle a rattlesnake is something that no one should ever do without good reason and a lot of experience. Remember, the most common way for someone to get bitten by a venomous snake is when they try to move or kill it. But the reason we did this is to prove how little these animals want to do with humans. Even when we pushed this interaction to the extreme by actually picking her up, she still wasn't attacking wildly or trying to kill us, despite her probably feeling like her life was actively in danger. Any kind of encounter that normal people have with rattlesnakes should never go nearly this far, and as long as you give them space without disturbing them, they have absolutely no reason or way to hurt you. The truth is, these snakes only bite people in self-defense, and the real purpose of their venom is to enable the hunting techniques that have created their unparalleled story of success. Our whole trip to Louisiana was focused on showing you the truth about some of the United States' most feared and misunderstood animals. And if that sounds like something you'd like to see more of, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. But you don't have to wait, because down in Ecuador last year, we came face to face with one of the most infamous spiders on Earth, the legendary banana spider. Trust me, this is one creepy crawly that you want to know about, because they have been showing up without warning in people's houses all over the world. If you want to find out what's really going on here, check out this video where we catch a wild banana spider to show you where so many people get their story wrong. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.